So we're finally getting started on this gable end wall. First, I need to get all these cut here. That'll go on before our rain screen goes on. These are quite easy. I'm just putting a dam up on the end so that water that does hit this trim is gonna work over the window and not go down the edge of the window. But uh, this will all get taped off. We'll do all these and then we can run our water screen. And this is a, this is a huge pain when you're by yourself, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. Greg's doing something else important, so. And the goal is to try not to stretch this stuff. And what I'm doing is trying to find a, a nice straight bottom line There's a good chance that that's not perfect, so we're not gonna do a ton, but it'll be our starting point so we have something to go off. Okay, I kinda like that. Huh, I'm actually quite impressed that this laid so well. The next row I'm gonna have to do out of the boom lift. All right, we don't have all of our water screen on, but we're gonna get this first piece up and then work our way out of the corner as we go. And I don't have my nail gun and compressor and hose everything, so I've got a 15 gauge, and I'm just gonna do some temporary nailing just to hold it. Yeah, let's hold that right there. Perfect, because now that we have that centerpiece, we can go off of it and measure into these windows. It's the tallest, longest piece that we have, which means it's the easiest one to ensure that it's perfectly straight and it hits the center of our peak, both on the roof, down low and up top. See, so by running from the peak out, we've got nice tall lines that we can measure into the windows and then we can keep it nice and plumb versus if we started on the corner, Getting through all these windows, even if you did everything you know as good as you could, you might be off by the time you get to the peak, and you want that to be obviously the the focal point. So all the all the weird stuff can happen out at the edges, and you'll never 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 even know it. Gonna be putting on my hearing protection. I know that. Now that I got the siding on, before I move into battens or anything else, I gotta trim these windows out. And I grabbed this really, really foolishly. And I'm just tacking this for now because I will put a, a larger nail in here, like a full round head siding nail. But this is just to get it up here. It's a little bit easier to work with. And then the top, I'm actually gonna have to put a piece of reverse J channel, and that's just to seal the top off so water's not sitting on the wood. I also throw a bead of caulk there as well. Pre-assembly is where it's at, man. Makes this so much easier. Now I do believe you could actually use a 15 degree and put these trims on with it. I just like I like the strength of the large full red or full round head, but I think that looks pretty good. We'll get it nailed off properly uh, when I get the other gun out. Okay, so yeah, that side goes that way. How are you doing this? Good Lord, you'd never do that with anything else. <sighs> now that we have the siding on, we will need to get corner trim, band board trim up and over the gable. Then we'll define the shake, the bottom of the shake with a piece of uh, five quarter trim here and then that's what our battens will die into on the lower side and that's what our um, shakes will sit in or on top on the gable. All right so this little front porch you know the little things always take longer it seems than the big things because the little things usually contain the same number of details in a smaller space so you have less visual work getting done because everything is details everything is getting cut uh, so this gable has the same details that the front gable has, but it will take probably not a whole lot less time just because everything will be specific and cut. There will be no full pieces. There'll be no just running and gutting. So I've 
framed down my soffit. I've put boards every two foot. I've got a nailer along the edge so that I can run my smart side soffit. So we're just gonna double check our dimension. Make sure that there's nothing weird going on that we missed somehow. And then we're gonna wanna get our um, length. Now, typically what I like to do, and I think I might go ahead and do it, is have my side fascia on first. So the fascia that's gonna go here and back on this side. I wish I had Greg here to give me a hand, but I think I'm gonna be able to get it. I'm gonna get that fascia on. Thankfully, I've got an LDM nine foot four and three quarters, which makes sense. All right, couldn't really see it in the camera, but you'll see the black over here. I did get that fascia installed and I cut down my end fascia, but I wanna make sure it fits and is good before I paint it. I like it. I do like it. All right, so I gotta get this painted. That way you don't see the backside. And I'm not using a framing gun uh, because I want to use a framing gun. I'm using this 21 degree because it has a full round head and I can leave it slightly proud and then pound it in. So it gives a nice finish for the trims, I think. All right, so behind me here, we've got our corners on and we've got the rake trim. And now what we need to do is define the bottom trim for our shakes. So the goal was three quarters of the gable. We weren't gonna go the entire gable. We actually tried that on the back north wall. I don't know if you guys remember that. I don't even know if I actually showed that, but the client didn't like that, thought it was too much. And so we, we are bringing that um, shake detail up into the gable about three quarters of the way. So Greg's getting a level, we'll get a line snap, we'll run our trim, then I've got to do a little bit of drip cap, and then we're off to the races with our shake. You might be saying, Kyle, why did you run all of that vertical siding on the gable if you're just going to be covering it with shake? And that is because the way that all these trim details work, if I would have ran, uh, since all my trims are over top of my vertical siding, if I would have ran um, the shake how do I explain this? I wanted all my trims to be on the same plane, so I needed an even playing surface. If I would have ran the vertical, ran the trims, then where the trims were not over top of the vertical, they would have been at a different dimension. I didn't want that, so hence we went ahead and just ran the whole sidewall with vertical siding, or the end wall, and now we're gonna cover it with shake. All right, so I've got all my cap trims. Well, basically they are uh, like a drip cap. And that's just so moisture doesn't sit on top of this trim. It'll go out and over. Hmm. All right, that's weird. I'm not able to go up for some reason. Figure that out. Uh, but anyway, I've got a joint here and I'm obviously gonna wanna make sure that I've got a little bit of uh, sealant here. We're using Lexel. I've really started to like this stuff. It's an acrylic and it is good enough to stick to just about anything. Also with this trim detail, I'm not gonna tape it off or anything because you remember, 
there is a chance that water will get into these cracks just like there is a chance it could get into these cracks. It's going to be super minimal, but that is why we have our rain screen, which is that Benjamin Opdyke product. All right, so I got all my stuff loaded up. I've got my starter strip, which is inch and a half, and I've got my first cut on my first shake at a 412 pitch, and let's get this thing started. And it says every 16 inches you want to nail these. I don't really mind throwing a couple more nails in. I don't want them going anywhere. Another piece of starter. You can kind of see how this is going to go. It won't be too bad. This goes pretty easy. I do like it. All right guys, so I brought my camera here into the lift, which is not the best place, but I wanted to get you some content. I know it's really hard to see. So I'm gonna flip you around and I'm gonna kind of point some things out. So the first thing you're gonna notice here is the starter strip. So the starter strip here, it gives a bevel to our first shake so that it has the same appearance. If you don't use the starter, and some people don't use the starter, this first piece looks a little flat. So when you're looking down the wall, you can see how it angles out slightly. And that's because the next one above it will also angle out slightly. So I think that's important. Also, you'll notice how the stagger is pointing up and that first course is all flat on the bottom. And that's obviously on purpose because we want a nice clean line there. And now what we're gonna do, I've got my last piece to cut here. So I'll get a measurement. I'll put my pitch on here, get this piece, and then we're gonna flip the shake over so that the stagger is facing down and then we're gonna run left to right. And the reason we ran right to left here is because you'll see the underlap is on the left side when running flat bottom and our overlap will go over top of it. That way you get this right here. So you can see this here has the underlap and then the overlap. So now we've got the stagger going and we're running this shake out. So um, cool thing is you'll notice right here on the shake, there's a little notch that's gonna tell you where to set it for the 10 inch spacing. So I'm running a 10 inch lap. And then also over on the other side where your overlap is, you're gonna line it up with this down here and that's gonna give you the reveal. That way when you step back, it's harder to see where those lap joints are. And I think this should go pretty quick other than the cuts. Uh, it's very easy to lay out the field. Okay, now that we have this stagger here, basically what I've done is taken 16 inches off of each one uh, because on a natural uh, flat square wall, not a gable, you wanna go 16 and 32. Um, if I were to take 32 off a piece, it would just be a little tiny corner and that's not, doesn't really make much sense. So I wanted to see what this would look like. This is three uh, pieces with basically 16 inches off of it and all my joints everything looks like it's uh, like this one doesn't line up with this one I don't see any pattern specifically and it might you know it's going to patternize or randomize a little bit but hopefully you shouldn't see it see if I had a little cut station up here a little saw it'd be great I'd be just going to town but I, I could not fit it in here, you know what I'm saying? Yo, we're just about out of battery, guys. So we've got the stagger going up. We're about five courses in, and the peak is right here. So it goes pretty quickly. Greg's helping me with the cuts. It's been a little bit of a struggle because even if you're just a micro centimeter off on your pitch, it can change things. So we've done a couple uh, recuts, no big deal. You can usually use that piece later on in the job. So we're not wasting much, uh, but we're gonna wrap this up and we'll come back to you when we're done. Greg's cutting me my last piece. It's gonna go right up there and finish this thing off. And then we'll get some good footage. Uh, maybe I'll even pull out the drone today. I don't know. I do know, however, that when I'm done with this, we're gonna go focus on the battens right below me and get all those battens on. And I think that's gonna really change the look of this gable. Um, I mean, 100%, it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait, stay tuned. Okay, cool. So that'll get capped like that. Now we can come through, nail this top off. That's gonna secure that in place. 
a little bit of caulk up top, and now we can put our batten on. All right, so here with this piece of trim, I like to cut one at a time. I wanna fit one side in and then cut myself out of a scrap, just a piece. That way I can kind of look at it, make sure that I like the pitch cut. That's a really nice clean pitch cut. It doesn't always work out that way. I mean, we built this frame and we did our best to make it perfectly a 612, but you just never know. So we're gonna go ahead and get one installed and then it'll give us an exact on where we wanna install our next one. 50 and 5 eighths. All right, one more, gotta go cut it. All right, so now that I have this piece cut, I'm not gonna paint it just yet. And this sometimes gets me in trouble because I forget to paint things. But that's why, because this is still, oops, this one's a little bit tighter than I want. I don't want it that tight. And if I painted it, I would have wasted my time and I had to go make a new cut. Anyway, try this again. I didn't take a measurement. I literally just eyeballed how much I wanted to take off and I'm gonna say that's, that's pretty good. Go ahead and paint these edges up. It's gonna be a hot one today, man. Can already feel it. That never coincides very well with having a film crew filming everything that you do because my blood starts to get a little bit higher pressure, start to heat up. And I'm a, I'm a hot body anyway, like I sweat anyway, but for whatever reason, I'm sure it's nerves, anxiousness. It just gets way worse when there's seven or eight people watching you do your work filming you and you're under some sort of a pressure to perform, not make mistakes. So I've showed you guys this before. This is a Stabila angle finder and uh, we're able to just go ahead and set this on the wall, find level. And this is a 612 pitch. So this is, this is reading out at like 26.8. We know a 612 is 26.57, yeah. So that's probably what it is because literally this thing is super sensitive. I can just put a, look at that, I just put slight pressure on this and it changed it to 26.5, so it's super accurate. So now I'll get my dimension, get my rips, and then we'll get them installed. But we're not gonna install them because the, uh, the video crew is gonna be here to film this. I'm just doing prep work before they show up because once they show up, it gets a little crazy. So really you can't see everybody here, but there's probably 12 people all watching, making sure that uh, everything we do is right. So that's kind of nice. Uh, everybody's filming. I'm talking to my camera. Oh, yeah, you're talking to your camera. Yeah. <laughs> no apologies. This is the way it goes. Greg's half the time like, are you talking to me or your camera? Hopefully I cut this right. Now everybody's watching. Do you want to do it right now? Yeah. 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 So see, it's hard to get anything done because we're just stopping and we're going to do a little tip for LP. I'm talking to my camera, by the way, also. Oh, okay. So everything, you guys, I'm talking to the camera. We're, we're showing some BTS, you know, for the YouTube channel. Okay, cool. You good? So LP Smart Side Expert Finish Shake, it can be ran either staggered or you can flip it over and run it flat, smooth edge. Here on my first course, I like to run it flat. That way there's a nice crisp line. You're gonna wanna run right to left when you're going that way because of the shiplap. When you're doing staggered, you're gonna go left to right so that you cover the shiplap the opposite direction. And to get this dimension, I like to just run my level across till it touches my trim, 23. Five eighths. Okay, you good or you want another one? Can you re one more time? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep, 23 and 5 eighths. Here, let me show you the picture that I'm going off of. The diagram does show the flange. Right here, here you go. You're right, it's right there. Yeah. It's right through the flange. The only reason it's there on a stud application is because a stud's an inch and a half and you have to you be have to, there. You have to hit the stud. Mm -hmm. But in sheathing only, it's just suggested. It doesn't matter. Best part about this is it kind of forces you to get the work done. No time because you're kind of under the gun, people waiting on you. But then you usually end up waiting on most of them. I mean, already I feel like I, I can already see the dimension taking shape. Do you see it? Do you see it? Man, it would sure be nice if somebody made a hose-free siding nailer. I shot two and a half inch nails. What do you guys think? You guys are watching this in real time. Does it look like those battens really made a difference? Personally, I like the shadow line that the battens create versus a flat wall. The flat's a little bit too modern for me. I know everybody's got differences of opinions and that is completely fine. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think? Flat wall or battens? Would you look at that YouTube? I am beyond ecstatic with how the exterior of this barn dominium turned out. I mean, the LP Smart Side is an amazing way, I think, to bring what I would call your traditional barn look into something that's so much more residential. I mean, this looks like, yes, a big home. It's, it is square, it's more rectangular. Uh, the porches do add some detail. I think they soften it up, make it more approachable as a home. I know a lot of people are like, I'll never live in a barn home. And then they kind of see them and they're like, yeah, okay, I think I could, I think I could do that because they're so versatile. You can do just about anything on the inside. You're not constrained by design and, or I should say, you can design anything what you, for what you want. With this right here, you get the square footage you're looking for and then you can do anything on the inside and 20 years down the road, you can redo everything on the inside without really worrying about any structural issues because the shell of the building, that is its own little system and it, is, it's, it carries its own strength and uh, the interior walls only strengthen it. But that smart side, weather logic, standing seam roof man this house is going to look this good for a very long time because those are all products that are going to last a really long time um, and the nice thing is this is only a few miles from my shop so i can come by see this uh, for a long time because i know this really makes me feel good to see this i hope you guys have really enjoyed you know putting this in exterior together the cool thing is we're not done yet good and bad because we have been here a while not that i am complaining because this job has been great we just have a lot of other work to do so if you haven't already subscribed make sure you do subscribe if you're done with this project if you've seen enough barn dominium and you don't care about how the interior finishes up even though i think that's going to be the best part just stick around we've got a lot of projects coming down the pipeline a lot of cool things and i'm always excited to share with you guys what we're doing, what we're learning, the new tools we're using uh, to do these new tasks that we're, we're figuring out. Uh, but in general, just to kind of show how fun it is to really, you know, you guys think back to the first video when we're laying this thing out and there's just this concrete pad with, a, you know, a foundation wall. That was it. And now look at it. I mean, that that's Greg and I. That's two guys. And to be able to do that and to really feel, you know, some sort of accomplishment is like the greatest feeling in the world because it's just a big pile of materials that we started with and a lot of hard work. So um, if nothing else, hopefully that's motivating you to go out and do something because you can, you can do it. This is like a big elephant and the best way to eat an elephant is just one bite at a time. For us, it was just one day at a time, just grinding away, you know, each detail, but never really getting overwhelmed or never letting the big picture, you know, kind of, kind of make you say, man, I just can't do this, or I'm gonna take it easy on this detail, or I'm gonna not care too much about that detail. No, just always one day at a time, doing your best work, and at the end, you have something that you can really be proud of. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. We got some drone footage that we'll put up here so you guys can kind of get it from the scale. What a great, great project, and we're not even done yet. So we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Mm -hmm.